welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Ever is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. What if I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but by just adding something wonderful and affordable to it? Skin that looks and feels more even, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, with smaller pores. Well, Rajala Hydrating Serum is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It's perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or prepping for an empty nest. Our serum is clean, beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals and features hydroluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C, the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner and moisturizer without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it from Regila's Amazon shop today by clicking the link in the bio. Welcome back listeners to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so happy that you're here. I have a treat for you today. I have my friend Jade Olivia with us. Jade, welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Hey, thanks for having me. This is gonna be super fun today. It's gonna be great. <laughs> it's already so fun. I just love seeing your face and you here with us. I would love for you to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what is it that you're passionate about right now? What is lighting you up? Yeah. Ooh, man. <laughs> That's an open-ended question. Sure. Okay. So again, my name is Jade and my story is super interesting. And I'm sure we're going to like touch on, on the details as we go, but the kind of overarching story is that in March, 2020, right? Like when the world was falling apart, I decided to quite literally rip off all the band-aids. I, I left my husband. I quit my job. I moved into an apartment, never lived alone before. I've been with my ex-husband since I was 19 years old. I started being a single parent, well, part-time single parent or a co-parent. Like I said, I quit my job. I started my own business. I had to spend all of my savings to get on my feet with business. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was an incredibly traumatic time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you separate from someone, you lose half of your family, right? So I had 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 a lot of grieving to do and still do and you know put on your best face for your kids mm -hmm. i currently have a seven-year-old and my twins i have boy girl twins they're four <laughs> so it's like i think that feels so so long ago but it really wasn't mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. but a lot has happened since then in my industry is small business automation so you know people with you know coaching consulting businesses much like josie i work directly with with people who the kind of people who wake up in the morning and say i'm going to change the world today i have a really cool idea yeah i love i love entrepreneurs i love parents who get it i love parents who are entrepreneurs because they're parents you know mm -hmm. there's there's so many you know different ways to to wear these hats but there's a particular type of people that i love of working for and love mm -hmm. working with and love serving and my entire business revolves around making their lives easier yeah, awesome. <laughs> so that's what we, I do. Need, we need people making the entrepreneur <laughs> journey easier because the entrepreneur journey is nothing easy about no, it it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard <laughs> it's hard but it is it's like fuel right it's like jet fuel mm -hmm. that fuels you up and lights you up and and it gives you something to look forward to each and every day because it's never the same right right <laughs> always yes. different well every day is a roller coaster that's the best way to put it it's like mm -hmm. yeah it's that roller coaster and so thank you for sharing your story with us in 2000 yeah. 
2020 yeah. was definitely hard for a lot of us. All of us, I feel like our world got turned upside down. And you went from, like you were saying, from literally ripping off the Band-Aid to creating the life now that you love, that you're passionate mm -hmm. about. So I would love for you to talk on that. Like, how were you able to transition from such a low point to turning it around? And that is relatively a quick turnaround. Yeah. In one word, it's people. No entrepreneur. I mean, this goes for anyone, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, but especially for entrepreneurs, don't do anything alone, period. Mm. And there's a bunch of other different ways to angle that. Like, you know, you can always say, never be the smartest person in the room. Always find your mentors and your peers and keep being around them over and over again. And for me, what I did, and here's a really great tip for anyone, for a year straight, I didn't let a week go by where I didn't meet and have a private Zoom call with at least two new people, not with the intention of getting anything from it, you know, not with like trying to make a sale or trying to build a referral relationship. Those things happened naturally with the right people because I filled my cup with amazing relationships. And I'm still, two years later, I'm still getting clients from those kinds of meetings because of, of the bridges that I built at that time. So it was meeting new people. It was finding my mentors. Obviously, I hired a coach. Guys, if you're not working with Josie or someone in your industry, do it do it, invest in yourself, invest in your business. I promise you when you're, and this, this is same goes like when I work directly with my clients, you, you can't see everything when you're in it, mm. right? You know, people come to me because they're stressed and they need efficiencies in their mm. systems, right? And they don't know where to start, but it's easy for me to find a start, not because I'm smarter, but because I'm not emotionally like upfront, you know, looking at a Monet going, oh my gosh, there's dots everywhere, right? Like it's, it's that person who mm -hmm. tells you things because they love you. They want to see you succeed, but they'll also tell you things you don't want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> And I love that you're talking about get support and it's a people's game. It really is. It's building those relationships. And as you said, you were talking to two new people every day for a year. That is a commitment. Week. Yeah. A week. Yes. yes. Like that is commitment. Yeah. yeah. Once the ball rolled, it was actually easy because, you know, I, I grasped in my own bubble. But then once I met someone, I made a point to be like, hey, is there anyone that you think I should just connect with and be mm -hmm. friends with? And so it, it was easy to snowball once once you kind of put yourself out there. So yeah. continue to ask, ask for connections, put yourself out there. You know, whenever whenever I have the lovely opportunity to chat with Josie, I like always think to myself, oh man, it'd be so cool if she knew this person. Like people, people naturally want to make connections. Mm -hmm. So ask yeah, for it. So ask for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you're saying that it's a people's, it's a people in relationship building because mm -hmm. a lot of the times especially as women we don't want to ask we don't want to mm -hmm. seem needy we don't want to receive that help that we so desperately need we think we can do it all ourselves in motherhood and entrepreneurship and so i would love for you to speak on that how were you able to be like i'm just going to ask and i'm going to allow myself to receive it yeah yeah well when i when it came to the business part it was it was much easier to ask for business support because the more entrepreneur communities, such as the one where I met you, it was just happy and exhilarating and mm -hmm. being around like-minded thinkers. At home, that was where I struggled to ask for yeah. help with my kids and in my life. And there was, there was, I literally had memories of I'd never mowed my lawn before. Mm -hmm. And I'm four foot eight, you can't tell, but I'm super, super teeny. And it's hard for me to push a lawnmower up a hill in my apartment. I live in a like a condo duplex I'm renting right now and have since I moved out and it's on a hill. And I, I was like, had to like push from underneath it and I was crying the whole time, but I refused to ask someone for help. So it was much more fun to ask for help in the business world than it was mm -hmm. with, with my momming. <laughs> yeah. So how did you bridge that gap? Have you been able to start asking for help and receiving help? Cause I mean, they say how we do one thing in one area is basically how we do all things. So mm -hmm. by practicing asking for and being able to receive, has that fallen into your parenting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because I where my kids and I live, it's my ex husband's hometown. Mm -hmm. So he has family support. If he needs to do something, he can call his dad or a sister to watch the kids. And I'm like a transplant here. I mm -hmm. didn't grow up here. I have a couple friends, but not like 
anyone that I could ask, like I could a family member. Yeah. So I don't have local support. I don't have local help. So instead of asking for help, I had to hack myself and my time. So my ex and I, he's a wonderful father. So I'm very mm -hmm. fortunate in that. And so we have the kids 50, 50. Mm -hmm. And so you would think there are some days where I'm completely alone. You would think that I could get stuff done, like, you know, clean my house, do my laundry. I don't. And here's why. And here's a hack for all single mom business owners out there. On days when I'm completely alone all day, sun, you know, sunrise to sunset and sleep and then do it again completely alone. Don't do your laundry. Don't do, you know, don't do the dishes. Work on your business because I can do laundry and I can do dishes and I can involve my kids with that. They're getting older. They can, they can learn how to load the dishwasher with me. They help me separate like the socks and underwear. And we, you know, we have fun with that, but I cannot work when they're around, mm -hmm. period. So instead of feeling sorry for myself and being like, oh, I'm a single mom, I just can't work that much. I have to segment my time really wisely. Mm -hmm. When I'm alone all day, I wake up and I work and I work until I go to bed. Mm -hmm. That way when my kids are around, I can put on my blinders and go, I'm mom. This is all I'm going to do all day is be a mom. And my weekends with my kids, I don't touch my computer. So that's such a powerful thing that you do, that you've got the awareness to do that for yourself and your children. Because I do notice that a lot of the clients that I work with, that time management piece and giving themselves that permission mm -hmm. to have the time to just go all in on what they're passionate about, what they're working on, whether it is the side hustle or the full-time work. And so mm -hmm. saying that, making it a priority is basically what you're saying it's mm -hmm. make it a priority and if you're a single parent and you have that time to do it great but if you're not then you almost have to like segment it as well like mm -hmm. time for your family time for your work and make it like non-negotiable yeah. exactly exactly and that's the only way i survived because i wish i could have asked for help mm -hmm. i don't have family nearby i don't have a sitter i can depend on and so maybe in some ways that made it easier to ask mm -hmm. for help and make connections in business because i i was unable to yeah. at home so i didn't ask for help i made all the sacrifices so that i could only depend on myself yeah. at home and I didn't ask for it. So when it came to work, I was like, who wants to hang out with me today and teach me things? What can I do for you? What can we do for each other? And it all just kind of grows from there. Yeah. Thank you for that tip. Cause that's huge. And mm -hmm. if, yeah, if you're listening to this and this is something that you're like, I want to try it, give it a week, right? Give it yeah. two weeks, give it a yeah. month and see how it works for you because it is so fun to make connections and meet new people. And I know that yeah. not everybody is kind of outgoing in that way. <laughs> I am. <laughs> right? So that's why I say you can start slowly. You don't have to go all in and all out for the full year. Like just give yourself, just try it out, see how mm -hmm. it works for you. And so mm -hmm. with business, like you went from working for somebody else to working for yourself, becoming mm -hmm. an entrepreneur yourself. I would mm -hmm. love to hear that journey. And also mm -hmm. that journey from your standpoint of doing it, like you said, as a single parent. Oh, it, it's, it's spicy guys. <laughs> it's spicy. Unlike a lot of people, I did not have some like, oh, here's my side hustle or my passion. I'm going to turn it into a business and mm -hmm. it's going to be fun. I had a, it was low paying and hard work, but I had a work family and good relationships. And, you know, without getting into the weeds, like when my life blew up and I decided to, to leave my husband, like they made themselves the victims of that. And it turned into this really hostile work environment where they personally resented me and were treating me poorly because of decisions I was making in my personal life. <laughs> it was really mm -hmm. awful. And because of like my, my loyalty and kind of like putting my head down and not thinking that I deserved a lot more, I stayed there for much longer than I should have until like just one day my boss was so mean to me one day and I like literally was like I can't do it it's like I had like an epic you know throw the papers in the air you know fucking kind of quitting day and I did that and I remember driving home going what am I gonna do and fortunately and I think at anybody could find a marketable skill that they have be it you know professional organizing or babysitting or you know professional caregiving i mean there's anything that you can do that you can monetize for me the skill that i could monetize at the time was using what was then called infusionsoft which is now keep so the tool that i use in my freelancing in my consulting business to automate small businesses i was using that tool as a user in my former office mm -hmm. so when i quit 
I went and got myself certified in the Keep community mm -hmm. and met as many people as I humanly could. And inevitably, small businesses who need me knew who I was. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So again, that really goes back to that relationship building. All about yeah. relationships. It's not yeah. what you know, guys. It's who you know, which, you know, let, let's talk about parenting for a minute, mm -hmm. guys. <laughs> like it is so hard to be a mother of small children. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying even if you have an excellent father, devoted co-parent, you know, married, you know, doesn't matter. It's still really hard, especially mm -hmm. on the mom, because your body turns into like this vessel for someone else, particularly if you're breastfeeding, you know, like your, your entire tension span is for someone else. Your entire mental energy is for someone else, your entire, you know, and I was double breastfeeding. So I was, mm. you know, burning like 5,000 calories a day with like a baby on each nipple. And I was so tired. I couldn't even like put, you know, add one and one at mm. that point. And I wish like, I love what you're doing right now, Josie. I wish I had that like inspirational mindset at the time, but I was so unhappy. I was drowning in like, who am I? What am I going to do with my life? My marriage is unhappy. I love my kids, but I'm not like a human being anymore. I'm just like this like flabby set of tits that's just there to like serve everyone and be tired all day. And is I think now having gone through that, Here's my advice, to, <laughs> my advice to, to people, mother, any mother, whether you're an entrepreneur or not with, with small children is it's okay to say you're tired and that it's hard and cry about it. And it's, it's rough. It's beautiful, right? It's amazing. It's the most incredible experience ever. And I wouldn't trade it for the world, but it was also the most draining and dare I say, damaging to my sense of self. Maybe I wasn't strong enough at the time, you know, mentally able to handle it. But I, I whatever the reason is, I it was, I lost myself mm -hmm. very, very much. And when I delivered my twins, I had severe postpartum depression. So there was, you know, months where I would just like cry all day and I didn't want, I didn't even want to hold them, but I did. And I, you know, pushed through it because you love them so, so, so much. And so my life now is like, I'm almost 40 and I'm like rediscovering. I feel like I've just begun to live my life because granted, I still have very needy small children, but they, they're older now. They're not in diapers. <laughs> We're finally done potty trading with <laughs> the twins, man. That was rough, <laughs> you know? And so it's at the point where we can, we can all be ourselves and be a family unit. Mm -hmm. And those two things aren't mutually exclusive. Yes. And I love that you're talking to the fact that it wasn't always easy. It was really hard and draining and you lose yourself. And that is what birth this make life fun podcast, especially in motherhood, because though I went into it with the thought process that it was not going to be that way. Like I've heard this story time and time again. So I'm going to mm -hmm. consciously go into it thinking it's going to be completely different. It's going to be easy. It's I'm just going to live my life. No, it was completely who am I now that I'm a mm -hmm. mom. And exactly. so, and so that you are speaking to that, normalizing that is just huge for us. So thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that and giving women and moms permission to feel their feelings and allow themselves to be in it, knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And, and like, guys, th this is a safe space. This is a conversation that I don't have very often mm -hmm. because I am afraid to be judged. Mm -hmm. I love being a parent, but the things that I say now about parenting versus then versus before are yeah. all different things. Yeah. And so it's scary and I am afraid to be judged, but I, people, people like you who offer, you know, shows like this in safe spaces for, for me to say, yeah, it sucked. It was really hard and it was awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yes. it, that, that was my experience and maybe someone else's is different and that's amazing, but that was, that was mine. And we got, we got through it. The divorce was hard on all of us. The adjustment of the lifestyle was, was hard on all of us money was tight for a good couple of years and it was mm. hard on all of us and we got through it you're gonna get through it you're gonna nothing get through is, it nothing is ever permanent guys. Right. how <laughs> did you get through it what was your things that helped you get out of that hole out of that place that was dark mm -hmm. what was it that was like your light that kept guiding you forward because i know our kids definitely help us with that Absolutely. but what was it internally because when you're don't feel like yourself 
it's really hard to even get up. It's hard to do things, right? So what mm -hmm. was it that was pushing you forward and getting you to keep moving and getting you to know that there was the light at the end of the tunnel? Speaking of the word normalizing, mm -hmm. right? It's the people, right? That the being around other entrepreneurs and realizing this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And that finally normalized lies me so part of like me the light coming out of that tunnel of like who the hell am i mm -hmm. all i am is that you know just breastfeeding and i'm tired and working for someone else's company part of coming out of that was realizing that pre-entrepreneurship i've always been like a creative like, excitable thinker and people thought that was wrong you know mm -hmm. we, we all grew up you know go to college and get a really good job and i have severe add and I'm super, super creative thinker and I get really excited. Then I stop doing that thing and I do something else. You know? And so my, my whole life I've, I've been stifled, been told mm -hmm. there's something wrong with me. You need to sit down. You need to listen. You need to work harder. You need to go to college. I have a music degree, super not helpful. <laughs> it turned my hobby into a chore. I finally found a place where I didn't feel broken. So the, the inspiration of pushing along because entrepreneurship is hard mm -hmm. y'all just like parenting it's yeah. the best and the hardest thing you're ever going to do your baby you're taking care of little kids and you're taking care of a business at the same time it's it's really really hard and you will fail so many times and you will get up and start again mm -hmm. and you'll fix it and you'll try again you'll try it again so so many times but this time as it is with parenting but with entrepreneurship this time when you get up and you start over you're doing it for you and you're not doing it to line someone else's pockets mm. so you know the concept of like people asking you you know what's your why and it's really easy you know you're like oh you know my kids and you know i want to be a good role model and take care of my family and have free time and you know financial freedom you know that's easy but keep going right ask it i've literally had conversations where someone was asking me that and i kept answering and they're like yeah but why and i started crying so i was like why isn't my answer good enough and i've been exp trying to find my why for three years now two and a half years and i've been having like epiphanies and my why is I strive, no matter how many times I fail, to have a business where I can serve people, first and foremost, but serve people as myself. Mm -hmm. When I run my programs and people come on my meetings, I dance and I'm really weird and I change subjects like 14 times and I'm fully expressed and I swear and I cackle and I'm not, you know, wearing a uniform of someone else's business. So my goal is to have a huge impact, make the world a better place, you know, make, you know, help my kids, obviously all of those, those are like the obvious ones, but the deeper meaning for me, like my, why, why the hell am I doing this? No matter how hard it is, is because I get to be myself and I've felt broken my whole life and I'm just going to keep going because I get to finally be me. Yes. And that is the ultimate. That is the ultimate when we can walk in our fullness and our power and claim it as this is who I am. Like you're saying, like, no, no apologies. Like, this is who I am. So how did you get to that place where you said, I am no longer broken. I am standing in my power. I am Olivia. Or yeah. Jay, Olivia, I am who I am and take it or leave it. Ooh, that's such a good question. And the, the answer is really funny, you guys. When you first start out in business and you try all the things and I'm going to try this model and try this tool and I'm going to try this and you know everything kind of fails and you kind of re rearrange the recipe and keep trying, right? I realized that the more I acted like myself, the more money I made. Mm. The more I dug into what I'm really good at instead of what I think I should be doing, that's when people were more attracted to me and I was speaking from my truest voice and not copying someone else's sales page or posting the same way someone else posted that got him a million likes. And I promise you, I am the cobbler with no shoes, guys. Mm -hmm. I am a pro professional digital marketer. I don't have a website. I don't have a standing lead magnet. I make stuff up as I go. Mm -hmm. I don't, I optimize everyone's business, but mine <laughs> because and how many of you guys out here who have ADD feel the same way? If everyone's doing it, I refuse to. Mm. <laughs> so, so I'm like, well, yeah, I'm going to do it this way instead. And does that always serve me? Oh, hell no. <laughs> but but as I like struggle to kind of put things together in my own weird way, when I find like a really good like ding, you know, like it just vibrates mm -hmm. really nicely. People are really, really attracted to that. And the more I lean into my quirkiness, the more money I make.
Yes. And I love that so much. Like, I just want to like do a <laughs> jump mm -hmm, for right? that. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is the same realization. That is the same revelation for me over the years is that yeah. I get to be me and you get to come along for the ride. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but it wasn't always that way because people mm -hmm. pleasing, that was it. You want yeah. to make people happy. So you don't yeah. say things that are going to step on people's toes. And so mm -hmm. did you find that on your way to standing in your power that you had to overcome that people pleasing aspect or was mm -hmm. it always like i'm just going to be me no no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the former definitely because when i first started out like like i said it was a transition of force not a mm -hmm. transition of choice so i said yes to everybody and everything yeah. i still have clients that i'm like randomly doing social media for even though i hate social <laughs> <laughs> like they just stay with me the whole time and then now i've subcontracted that out so i still make money but i don't have to do it. but yes. i said yes to everybody and everything mm -hmm. and now on one hand right you know I, i'm talking about like be your unique self which is basically another way of saying you know niche and and, and dig deep into like very specific but on the other side it's not a bad thing to say yes to a lot of things because i didn't find out what i was good at until mm -hmm. I said yes to all the things and tried all the things. And I had to go through that, like, you know, one to two year growing pains mm -hmm. of like, oh, I mean, I'm good at that, but I hate it. I'm bad at this, but I love it. And I had to find and kind of, you know, slap dash it together until I was like, okay, now, now I found my momentum. Yeah. So switching it back to you for a second, what's been really fun for me as like a, you know, a fellow entrepreneur and, you know, watching your journey from like pre parenthood to post-parenthood, there's a lot of coaches out there, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of mindset coaches. There's a lot of self-talk coaches. The more, and I've seen you go through this journey too. We've been going through it in tandem, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> but like the more you use language and position yourself with like your own quirkiness mm -hmm. and like the things that make you uniquely you, it's clear that you're attracting the right kinds of people yeah. you dig into your experience as a cosmetologist mm -hmm. and you dig into your experience as a parent and you dig into your experience of you know traumatic experiences and those are three like random unrelated things yeah. but put them under the coaching umbrella there are people that need that and if they look at you if they're picking between you as a coach and someone else who doesn't have one of those three pillars they're going to go with you. Right. And that's a beautiful way to paint the picture, right? Of bringing all our quirkiness. And as you're saying that, the th thought that comes to my mind is I thought I had to put all those in a different box. I thought yeah. I had to be traumatic Josie who went through an abusive childhood. I thought I had to put cosmetologist, beauty professional in one bucket, traveling mm -hmm. Josie, living life to the fullest in another bucket. Like I literally, thought all these buckets were different, but the mm -hmm. moment that I decided I get to be all of me and I get to bring mm -hmm. all of me to the table, yeah. it was like, this is it. Yeah. So that is the thing. When you do decide that you're going to step into your full power and claim who you are, you're like, mm -hmm. I get to bring all the buckets together mm -hmm. and you get yeah. to use all of them in, like you're saying, you get to use all of them and what you're gifting the world and what you're offering the world. And mm -hmm. it just makes you feel whole. Like it yeah. brings the fullness of who you are back to you. Did you have a similar experience? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And what's what's really interesting about that experience of like finding, you know, your your uniqueness and leaning into it. I've also found at the same time, and this is not intuitive, that the more I just be myself but talk less, mm -hmm. that's also been hugely profitable because I think one of my unique things that I've transitioned from is that, so I love attention and I love, this is not uncomfortable for me in the least guys. Like I, I I'm more, I'm more comfortable talking on a stage of like a bajillion people than I am in like a small room teaching. Cause then I can see them staring at me. Right? <laughs> yeah. I love big crowds. And I love talking and I used to like talk, 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 talk and old like traumatized addict Jade used to, you know, like flirt for attention and drink too much and party hard and be like, look at me. And so new Jade, the more I accept myself and like really like enjoy that and lean into it, the less I have to tell people. 
Mm. And I can just act like my calm, accepting self. That's been a result of all of my bad experiences. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it makes me a more accepting and empathetic person. And so the, the less I talk and the more I open my heart to people who need someone like me, the right people will come to me. Yeah. Like some people want hardcore agencies. We do this bark, 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 bark. Look at me. I'm loud. I serve these people. Those people have great clients. I have different kinds of clients. Mm -hmm. I have people who are sensitive and need to be told they're doing great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do audits of people's systems all the time. And I always come back and tell them like, you, you did not give yourself enough credit. Like mm -hmm. I can see what you're trying to do here. And let's, you know, tell me more about the experience that you want. And that's, that's, that's the way I do things. Mm -hmm. And I tried the other ways and it just, it was like wearing someone else's clothes. Yeah. It didn't, didn't feel good. So I just went with my way and let other people do the talking. Yeah. Oh, and that's so, like, that's so huge. Like, I want to talk about money for a moment. As you're speaking, you're saying how the more you lean into who you are, the more you let your quirky side out, the more you just are you without all the words, the more money that you're making. And that is for some of us to hear that it's like, really though? Because mm -hmm. that's not what we're taught to do. Oh gosh, no, you we're all from childhood, particular people like around our age-ish, right? We're like a very effed up generation of <laughs> being told you have to do good in school, you have to go to college, but we're also the ones who are paying the most for college. <laughs> Just, <laughs> like experiencing financial hurdles that are unmatched in, in history. And so I just, I failed at being a sheep in every way, shape or form and was told I was doing something wrong when I wasn't good at doing those things. And so entrepreneurship is the only way I, I can, I can live now. I just have to be around people that think that way. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I would love for you to tell our listeners where they can get more of this goodness where they yeah. can cheer you on and <laughs> like get like in touch with you interesting so <laughs> i i i just like you have gone through like this transition of like how am i gonna what, what am i gonna call my business today you know like <laughs> and so i'm transitioning right now so almost all of my income is coming from my freelance consulting so that's jade olivia consulting dot com which you'll love it if you look because like i said i'm a call with no shoes it forwards to like a landing page with like booking links so you can schedule a call with me just even just to say hi <laughs> like there's information on there but i don't have a real website and my goal for the coming year i started hosting a summit called the timeless marketing summit i plan to do it every six months so i'm going to do them every january and july so follow me on instagram at jadeolivia.co jadeolivia.co is my Instagram where I'm going to kind of talk more about the summit and why I do that, transition the brand into that. I would like that to be my parent brand. My consulting is a product and the summit is a product. I'm feeling okay. things out. Being I honest. I love the out. honesty. I love the transparency. I love you. And I think <laughs> yes, <laughs> honestly, and at this point of the show, I always just love to, after that conversation that we just had, I love to give you the floor to mm -hmm. speak on what is on your heart that you think these mompreneurs, these solo mompreneurs, mm -hmm. what is on your heart that feels like they might need to hear? You know, we've already touched on a lot of like the more like emotional topics. I mean, I, I could talk all day on the importance of just lean on your people, have a coach, join the Facebook groups, ask questions, meet people, all of those things, you know, I'll say until I'm blue in the face. But when it comes to more like technical stuff and like the marketing edge of it, I will tell you that entrepreneurship is is at an all time high, right? You know, side hustles and, and gig economy and all those things. And because of that, it's like medicine, right? There's good doctors and there's bad doctors. Mm. There's good marketing and there's bad marketing. There's good information, and there's bad information. And so as as I've been evolving over the last few years, I am finding more and more of the bad. Mm. You know, I grew up in the keep community is very like uh, small and authentic and genuine. And so once I started kind of growing out of that bubble, I'm like, Ooh, mm. I kept finding more and more like what I like to call bro marketing, you know, like all these guys who are like, I'm going to solve all your problems. Just be like me. And here's just follow this 10 step guide to 10 X your business. And I'm like, stop DMing me. You don't know anything about me. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of shady shit going on. What I did, that's actually the genesis of the, of this summit 
and a membership that I just started doing. So it's new. Like I said, follow me Instagram to kind of, you know, hear the ins and outs of it. But suffice to say, the point of the summit was to break through the bad information and boil it down to the good only, mm -hmm. because there's just so much crap out there. Like literally the tagline to the summit was, are you frustrated with marketing your business because of slimy gurus and silver bullet promises? Then come to the Timeless Marketing Summit. So what I did with that was I picked five amazing teachers that were authentic people who eat their own dog food they're not just barking from a platform people who are genuine leaders and genuine teachers i picked five topics and then the format of the summit because we're all busy and no one has time to come to like a five-day workshop and all that stuff i specifically planned it five presentations four hours mm -hmm. it was literally 30 minutes teach 15 minutes break 30 minutes teach 15 minutes break and i had a requirement that the speakers not only taught something but they had to do Mm -hmm. So there was a workbook that came with it. So everyone who came to the summit walked away with five action items to put to work on their business immediately. Wonderful. No bullshit. No, pro, you know, no, just buy this $5,000 tool or my $50,000 elite, you know, coaching accelerator program. And I'm like, oh, ugh. I get DMs every day. People telling me like, oh, how would you feel if you had 50 more clients a day? I'm like, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> So let me tell you how marketing works, okay? If you Google, how do you start a business, right? You're gonna see, first of all, you're gonna see big ads from big dollars. You're gonna see ads for like click funnels and you know, Russell Brunson and all these like men who have a ton of money who are gonna say, just buy this and you'll be perfect. Or the other thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna find really good information, but because they're following best practices, you're gonna have to opt in, give up your email address, and boom, you're going down their customer journey. Which at some point, you're gonna get an offer, mm -hmm. which is fine. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what I do. If you want information from me, I'm gonna capture you. And at some point, I'm going to tell you about my summit, hoping that you buy it. Yeah. It's $27, it's not a big deal. But anyway, I digress. That's how marketing works. You build your list, and then you tell them about the things to buy. So it makes it really frustrating for someone who, like, where do I just find 101? Can't I just read something for free and someone give me really good information about, you know, which tool do I use? Of course, the person who has articles on those has a preference, right? Like it's just really hard. The information environment is difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. So that was the, that was the goal of the summit was to provide it to people on a silver plate mm -hmm. without no guru promises, none of the bullshit. I made sure that it was good information only. So just fire beware y'all. It's, it's hard out there trying to get information. That's why I love the approach of meeting as many real people as possible. Mm -hmm. Join the Facebook groups, join all of them, even though, and you're going to find ones that, that you don't like. I follow a ton of people that I don't like what they're doing because I like to learn what I don't want to do too. Mm, absolutely. So from that, I would love to ask <laughs> if you were giving one tip for marketing to mm -hmm. somebody who isn't at the beginning, but who isn't exactly where they want to be. They're somewhere mm -hmm. like they're building their bridge. What would that piece of advice be? My, my number one marketing advice is to map out and measure your customer journey. People have different versions of this. The version I use is the keep version. And there's nine phases between someone who doesn't know you and someone who's a raving fan. It's target, attract, capture, engage, offer, close, deliver, impress, multiply. Mm. So, I mean, obviously that's nine and like the, the three being, you know, capture the leads, close the sale, create fans, right? So it's three high level things and map that out on purpose mm -hmm. and then this is how i onboard new consulting clients is we have this conversation we map out their customer journey and like i said you don't know what's going on when you're too close yeah. to it nine times out of ten they engage with me because they think they need this problem solved but after we actually map it out and measure their conversions between each stage we'll find out there's a bigger hole over here right you don't want to turn on more leads or, you know, get one of you know, one of those DMs for people who make appointments for you, or you, you don't want to pay for any advertising or new leads unless you have a customer journey. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're paying for people to fall off. So a great place to start is pick pick one product or one offer. And maybe you have many, but just pick one. And then take a piece of paper and write what are the milestones. So you want them to opt in for your free thing and then they purchase your thing and then you upsell to the next thing, maybe. And then draw a line between each of them and say, how are they getting here from A to B and how are they getting from B to C? And if it's not smooth or intentional or mapped out, then you're missing opportunities. And once you bridge those gaps, 
then you can predictably turn up the traffic and expect predict. I mean, that's all we all ever want our business, right, yeah. guys? It's predictability. Entrepreneurship is like this, right? It's just like a crazy roller coaster. And all we ever want is predictability. And the only way to do that is to map out and optimize your customer journey before you turn up the traffic. Uh, oh, thank you for that tip. That is huge. And that is when you rewind and you listen, yeah, and then listen again and you write it down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jade, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. And thank you for being so open and honest with us. Like it matters. Your story mm -hmm. matters. You matter. And what you're doing in the world matters. And thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. You can do it. You're doing great. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're gonna do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts, places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, yeah, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.